Good evening and welcome to Newsbreak Live. I'm Hiba Samad. It's Tuesday, February 11th. Thanks so much for joining us. Here are your top stories. After being under construction for over a month, one of the busiest bus stops in Torrance is now open once again, but with a few upgrades. Three. Yeah. The ribbon cutting of the newest bus shelter stop on Carson Street next to the Delamo Fashion Center was celebrated by transit staff, city officials and Metro. Torrance Transit transports nearly 6,000 passengers daily and recently two of the newest stops funded by Metro were unveiled. The bus shelters were created with security in mind. They're equipped with cameras, bright lights and audio and visual bus information. There's also plenty of bench space for tired mall employees, shoppers and protection against weather conditions. Metro has funded 29 of our rapid shelters. Today we're ribbon cutting only two here on Carson Street and we're looking to install the remaining 27 immediately. We're looking at starting within the next couple of weeks. Today it was very imperative that we cut the ribbon so we can get started on the remainder of the project. The best way to, to avoid traffic is to stop using your car if possible. And this is a nice convenient way. If you're going to Long Beach, it's much easier to get on a bus and have someone take you there. Bus riders can also conveniently purchase a tap card at the bus stop, which makes transferring to other metro lines easier when having to leave the city of Torrance by public transportation. Now, don't miss your bus. Download the Transit app, which allows you to locate your bus in real time. A South Bay resident stopped by a local hospital to make sure patients were able to experience the love of Valentine's Day. Founder of South Bay Mommies and Daddies blog, Laura Stotland, made a special delivery today at Province Little Company of Mary and Torrance Memorial Medical Centers by dropping off more than 1,500 cards for patients just in time for Valentine's Day. It was part of her kindness project where community members with their children made cards for patients who won't be able to celebrate the day outside hospitals. As a mother and someone who is passionate about giving back, Stotland says that she wanted to create a project that was simple and would bring the youth and community together. Local businesses became drop-off spots across the South Bay to collect the cards. In Torrance, AR Workshop and the Volunteer Center collected them. Cards were placed at Providence with patient meals, adding a little surprise when they received their usual meal for the day. I hope you have a good Valentine's Day. You are amazing. You can do anything if you put your mind to it. Because we don't get to actually see the patients receiving the cards the hospitals distribute, um, the most rewarding is, is having parents come to me and thanking me and saying, you know, thank you for doing this project. And um, they had such an, a great um, response from their children and, and being with their children and being able to have these conversations. We also give them some question prompts that they can ask their kids um, to kind of teach them about giving back. So it's just, it's been a great way to bring the community together. Make sure to tune into the next episode of This Week in Torrance, where Claudia Bermudez shares reactions from patients and staff from the hospital and why Stotland first began her blog. You can learn more about the blog at SouthBayMommiesAndDaddies.com. Valentine's Day is around the corner and locals here in Torrance shared their love story with us. With Valentine's Day this Friday, residents posted to our Facebook page at Torrance CA to share their special pictures. Steva and Reva Skal posted this selfie. They've been married for 52 years now. Then Delvin and Candace Arnold say they've been happily married for 23 years. Thank you so much for sharing those pictures. And if you ever have pictures you'd like to share with us, tag the city of Torrance at Torrance CA on social media. Road closures are slowing down traffic in Torrance this week. Through this Friday, there are pavement repairs underway on Hawthorne Boulevard between Pacific Coast and R Highway and Rolling Hills Road. From 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. today, northbound traffic between Newton Street and Rolling Hills Road was down to one lane. Drivers were not allowed to turn into and out of side streets. Tomorrow, you can expect similar delays as northbound traffic between Pacific Coast Highway and Newton Street will be also down to one lane. Officials say at the end of the day, all lanes will be accessible. Now, officials from the Metropolitan Water District of Southern California and the City of Torrance are hosting an important meeting to inform the community about critical water issues. You can RSVP now for the Community Leaders Water Briefing on February 28th at the Toyota Meeting Hall. From 11.30 a.m. to 1 p.m., officials from the Metropolitan Water District of Southern California 
representing the city of Torrance and the West Basin Municipal Water District officials will be present. The feature speaker is State Senator Ben Allen. They'll all discuss water issues impacting our state, region, and city. You can RSVP no later than February 21st. You can email jamie at jdecker at mwdh2o.com. The Torrance Area Chamber of Commerce is looking to celebrate community members who are making a difference through diversity. Now through March 9th, the Torrance Area Chamber of Commerce is looking for residents to nominate individuals and programs who positively impact their community, support multicultural awareness, diversity, and contribute to the overall well-being of a strong and vibrant local economy. You can submit a nomination for individuals in the Torrance area and surrounding communities. Individuals may be entered into more than one category, but you just have to address the criteria for each of them. In the nomination application, an essay is required to give a brief introduction of the individual program, provide details that speak to the individual's program's involvement, growth, and stability in multicultural spheres. The categories for the awards are Advocate, Catalyst, Excellence in Academics, Outstanding Diversity Program, Rising Star, and Vanguard. Winners will be honored at the 2020 Multicultural Celebration on April 17th at noon. For the application, head to torrancechamber.com. The City of Torrance is asking the public to provide input on developing a Torrance homeless plan. The Torrance Social Services Commission will be holding three listening sessions where the public is invited to share their experiences and perceptions of homelessness in Torrance and how the city might strengthen its response to address the issue. The first meeting will take place on February 27th at 6 p.m. at the Torrance Council Chambers. Each session will be 90 minutes and specific questions will be asked that will help inform the development of a homeless plan. The city of Torrance recently was a host site for the 2020 Greater Los Angeles Homeless Count. The public is asked to RSVP their participation to Social Services Commission at torrentca.gov. Connect a Credit Union is now accepting applications to provide scholarships and grants to the community. Through March 1st, students and teachers can apply for Connect a Federal Credit Union's Youth Scholarships and Teaching Grants for Growth Program. The City of Torrance has two Connect a Credit Union locations. You can apply if you're 20 years of age or younger at the time of the application. A high school senior applying for or already accepted as a full-time student at a college or university or a full-time student already attending and continuing at a college or university along with other factors. The application also includes a written essay. Teacher grants are open to pre-K to 12th grade teachers certified in their state of residence as well as homeschool teachers. Grants will be awarded based on the information provided and several Several factors will be taken into consideration. They plan to give out eight $2,000 scholarships will be awarded to students who want to make higher education a reality, and six $2,000 grants will be given to teachers to help them improve instruction and classroom projects. The winners will be announced on or around May 31st. Head to connected.org for more information. A fundraiser benefiting children in the South Bay affected by cancer is looking for businesses to sponsor their event. The annual 13th Friendship Bowl hosted by Walk with Sally will take place on March 15th at the Gable House Bowl in Torrance. Now through March, if you sponsor your logo, it will be seen by thousands on various platforms. And there are other ways you can sponsor. You can match a challenge sponsor or showcase your support by sponsoring a team. The Friendship Bowl is a way for Walk with Sally Kleins to come together with the community to support the organization. People can honor a loved one battling cancer by fundraising for friendships so that no child has to walk alone in the face of a loved one's cancer. You can also create your own team and have a personal fundraising page. For more info, head to walkwithsally.org slash Friendship Bowl. The Torrance Certified Farmers Market announced a new vendor today. You can now stop by the market to indulge in some mini Dutch pancakes. You can follow them on omas underscore puffers. The pancakes are inspired by puffy puffer chews, a traditional Dutch batter treat resembling small fluffy pancakes. They're made with yeast and buckwheat flour. It has a light spongy texture. It's served with powdered sugar and butter. Owners say the recipe is a homemade one and it's made with natural ingredients. To learn more about the vendor, head to omaspuffers.com. The market is open Tuesday and Saturday from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m., rain or shine. 
A local business completes the sale of its property. Alpine Electronics of America, an automotive electronics manufacturer that offers innovative in-car multimedia, head units, amplifiers, speakers, and many other products sold a more than 108,000 square foot industrial investment property located at 1914 Gramercy Place in Torrance. IDI Logistics has acquired the asset for $21.5 million. Now, the buyer has plans to refurbish the concrete tilt-up building, which is located on more than 5.5 acres. The building used to be the seller's American headquarters before its relocation to Auburn Hills, Michigan. Now, let's get to the weather. Today, there was a high of 68 degrees and expected low of 50. Then tomorrow, there'll be a high of 64 degrees and expected low of 50. And on Thursday, there'll be a high of 65 with a low of 59 degrees. Now, don't forget, tomorrow is former President Lincoln's birthday. That means an observance city hall, city offices, and all Torrance libraries will be closed. Wednesday, refuse and recycling will be collected this Thursday. There will be no street sweeping on Lincoln's birthday, and normal street sweeping will return on Thursday. Well, in just two minutes, Donna Bowker talks about the South Bay Quilters Guild Show coming up this weekend and what you can expect. We'll be back in just a few. Hoping for a crisp breeze to help keep you alert. Oh, oh, he took a sip of water, too. That'll probably help. You were probably going to turn down the radio, too, so you could focus, right? Probably okay isn't okay. Yeah, right? If you see a warning sign, stop and call a cab, a car, or a friend. I think the water line is what really drove it home. I blew on him. See on page four that the projections need to be earthquake. Next Thursday? Seriously? Thursday? Can't do that. Uh-uh. This is really inconvenient. I have yoga that day. You have no time for this. So? I can't do Thursday, but I can do Friday. Disasters don't plan ahead. You can. Talk to your loved ones about how you're going to be ready in an emergency. Don't wait. Communicate. Welcome back to the second half of Newsbreak Live. Co-chair of the annual South Bay Quilters Guild Show, Donna Bowker, is here. Welcome to Newsbreak Live. Thank you. And this year, the Quilt Show, it's an annual event, is very special because it's celebrating the Guild's 40th anniversary. So tell me all about this weekend's event. Well, this is our 40th um, year, the 40th year of the South Bay Quilters Guild. We started in September of 1979, so we are 40 years old. We decided to take that 40th anniversary and carry it into our annual quilt show. So we've called the quilt show uh, Ruby Celebration. The ruby, as you probably know, is the gemstone that is uh, traditional for 40 years. So that's why we chose that name. So the event is taking place at the Torrance Cultural Arts Center this Saturday and Sunday from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. So tell our viewers, before we get into the details and the excitement of the show, what the South Bay Quilters Guild is all about. Well, the South Bay Quilters Guild is an organization of uh, people who enjoy quilting, enjoy learning about it, quilting themselves. Um, we have an um, annual um, as I said, an annual quilt show. We have monthly meetings where we gather, we listen to a speaker most months, um, a teacher who will come and talk about some aspect of quilting. Then um, we'll often have a workshop or a class the next day. 
um, then we just enjoy spending time with each other and uh, we have a lot of philanthropy. Our, our organization does a lot of things for the community. We, um, we make comfort quilts, which are small sort of lap size quilts that are donated to um, hospitals and nursing homes, um, shelters around the South Bay. We also do Quilts for Wounded Warriors, which is a, um, an organization that uh, we give quilts to soldiers and um, other military personnel in Afghanistan that have been wounded. They're just the right size to cover a stretcher, so they use them on the transport planes, which are unheated, as they're uh, medevaced to Germany. Another um, one of our projects is called Read Me a Quilt. It's a, a quilt made specifically for a child in the foster care system, and it's uh, matched with a, a book, so that the idea is the book and the quilt go together. And those are um, donated to children in foster care. We also have um, re recently been preparing quilts for disaster victims, so floods, fires, that kind of thing, uh, hurricanes. So a lot of great work to give back to the community. And are some of these quilts going to be present at the quilt show this weekend? Yes, we will have a display of all the community ty the types of community service quilts that we provide, the comfort quilts, the wounded warrior quilts, and the, the read me a quilts. So uh, those will all be on display, and, and uh, people can inquire about those and learn more about those at the show. So it's a two-day show. There's a lot of excitement. What would they experience if they come out on Saturday and Sunday? Well, on Saturday, and, and one, you, one entry fee gets you in for both days. You get a wristband, and um, so you can come back for the second day if you wish. Um, on Saturday, we'll, um, the show will be open, as you said, from 10 to 4, and also on Sunday. Uh, we'll have... Um, about 150 quilts on display. We'll have, um, it's, it's like going to a museum with, um, with the art made of fabric primarily. Um, we'll have lots of different kinds of quilts. There'll be uh, different techniques that are used and you can wander around. It's all in one large room so it's easy to walk around in an hour or so but you can certainly spend more time than that if you're interested in staying longer. <coughs> Excuse me. We also have uh, vendors that will probably about 15 vendors that sell quilt related or sewing related um, items. We'll have um, gift baskets. We have, I believe, 18 gift baskets that you have, can purchase um, tickets to raffle tickets to um, have an opportunity to win one or, one or more of those baskets. We also have a large bed sized quilt that we have made, members of the guild made, and that's available to purchase tickets to also raffle that off. And what else? We have a featured quilter who's a, a lady who's been in our guild for a number of years, just turned 92. Wow. And so we'll be uh, admiring the body of her work that she'll have a number of her quilts there that she's created over her lifetime. Um, and that's pretty much, um, there'll be a little snack bar I mentioned the vendors. We have the opportunity quilt in the back. You did say there's going to be a consignment booth and a boutique booth. That's so, right. Yes. So what's can, the difference between those well, two? Well, the consignment booth is where members uh, provide their or, or sell their quilts that they have made. They split the process, the profits a little bit with the guild. They gain the most of it, but the guild gets a little bit back. The um, the boutique is a place where we're selling small handmade uh, items that the guild members have made for sale. You did mention to me that there's going to be a live auction, and yes. it's actually extra special for you this year. Yes. And maybe you can tell our viewers about that. Yes, the auction's going to be on Sunday, and the, the quilts that are available for auction are, will be on display in the show on Saturday and on Sunday morning. Then at 1 p.m. on Sunday, we'll have a live auction that's held in the Nakano Theater, which is just across the, the patio from the Toyota Meeting Hall, which is where we have the main display. Um, my husband's actually going to be the auctioneer this year. He is not a, a professional auctioneer, <laughs> but he uh, knows a lot about quilting from being married to me for many years. And uh, he's got a, a great sense of humor. I think he'll provide a, an entertaining and uh, lighthearted experience as well as a real opportunity to purchase some truly unique and beautiful uh, items. Quilting is a form of art, so for people who don't know about it, I'm sure stopping by, they can learn more about the Guild. But 
also find out how they can become members of it. And one of the things I do want to talk about are the small quilts that's going to be based off of the Ruby celebration this year. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that and how people can check it out? Yes, every year um, when we have a quilt show, our guild has a challenge. And the challenge is abiding by the rules of the the uh, little exhibit that we're doing this year, the rules were your quilt had to be 24 inches by 24 inches. It had to have red in some color, some shade of red, and it had to have the number 40 in it somewhere. So it might have 40 buttons or 40 different kinds of fabric, or um, it'll be interesting to see how people decide to show that 40 in their quilts. Those quilts will all be on exhibit in the, um, quilt show all kind of grouped together so people can have an opportunity to look at them all and see how they compare to each other and how they're different. And we're going to take, um, play some of the video of those quilts that you were just talking about. Um, but tell me, what does it take to bring this show to life? You said 150 quilts. They're yep. made by all the members. I don't know what it takes to make a quilt, but maybe you can <laughs> put some perspective into that. Well, to make a quilt, it can be very simple. It can be very complicated. I saw a quilt recently where the uh, person who made it took 10 years to do it. Wow. Now, this is not, of course, working eight hours a day, five days a week, like a job. But um, people quilt when they have the opportunity. Um, some pe many of our members are retired, but we're also eager to have some newer, younger members that um, would bring some new, fresh life to us. Um, a quilt is made up of three parts. There's a top a back and a middle part that's called batting. And the um, process of attaching those three layers together is also called quilting. So quilting is the, is the hobby, if you will, and it's also the process for connecting those three layers together. It can be very simple, as simple as tying knots with um, embroidery thread, or it can be very complicated. Some people quilt by hand, other wow. people quilt on their machines. Uh, sewing machine, or they are there is something called a long arm quilting machine that is uh, can be either driven by a computer, I mean guided by a computer, or guided by an individual. But that's an enormous um, professional machine. And we've been showing video of previous shows and some quilts that you s pictures that you sent me. But tell me what it takes to bring a show like this to life. It really is one of a kind. It is, and it takes basically all year for us to get the quilt wow. show organized. Um, and it's a, it's a huge uh, undertaking. No one could do it by themselves. We do have a committee of about 30 people. Um, each person has a, an area of responsibility. Some jobs take one person, smaller jobs. Other jobs take three or four or five people. Um, just about every member of the guild is involved in the show in some way. Almost all of them will uh, be there and doing something to help during the weekend, or they've been involved in the planning and the execution as we've gone through the year. You've been part of the organization, the guild, for a very long time. You're a Torrance resident. So what do you want people to know about the South Bay Guild and who, who's made up of it, who are the members, and how can people join? Well, we are um, a group of about 140, 150 members. Unfortunately, we have about that many quilts. Unfortunately, we don't have one quilt from every person. That would be ideal. But um, we have members who are just beginning to learn to quilt. We have members who've been doing it, like our featured quilter, for decades. Um, we have people of all skill levels. Some are just, just learning and do very simple things. Others are uh, incredibly talented and creative and artistic. Um, quilters and, and artists. So um, to join, it's no problem. You can uh, come to one of our meetings. We meet at the um, St. Andrews Presbyterian Church on the corner of Avenue D and Pacific Coast Highway in Redondo Beach on the third Tuesday of the month. Um, our next um, guild meeting will be the Tuesday after the show, so Tuesday of next week. Um, the doors open at 6 p.m. The show, the uh, excuse me, the meeting starts at 6:45 and ends at about 9 p.m. This Tuesday, we'll be doing um, uh, we call it quilt show wrap up. So we'll be awarding ribbons to the people uh, whose quilts were uh, voted most popular by the people who come to the show. We have a, a viewer's choice ballot, so you can choose the, the quilt that you like best in each of several categories. And um, display and uh, mark that on your ballot. Submit that, and we tally those up, and we award those ribbons, those prizes, um, Tuesday a week from today, at our meeting. 
and all the show, the uh, winning quilts will be on display there. So that'd be a good time to visit if you wanted to come visit. If you wanted to join the guild, we st our guild year starts in uh, July and goes through June, like a fiscal year. So we're about halfway through the year now, a little more. So um, our annual membership dues are $45, but if you join now, you can pay half price. So that's oh. a good deal. <laughs> you can also visit a um, meeting anytime. Uh, normally we charge $5, but anybody who comes to a meeting and mentions this show will get in for free on me. So <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm what also, a great deal. <laughs> I'm also the membership chair, so you'll find me right inside the door uh, of the fellowship hall where we meet there at the church. So. Do people need to have like the skill to quilt or um, do, can they learn if they join? They can learn if they join. Nobody has to be a quilter to okay. join. Anybody who's interested in fabric arts can join. Um, enjoys coming to listen to our speakers. If you wanted to learn to quilt, I'm sure we could arrange that to happen. <laughs> um, There's a lot of people across the South Bay, right? Yes, that's right. So all the information you just mentioned, they can find at SouthBayQuiltersGuild.org. And I also want to add that photos of the quilts that are on auction are also on your website, correct? That's correct, yes. There's a separate website for the show, for the quilt show, but you can get to that um, site from the site that you just mentioned. There's a little link there to the quilt show, and that will take you to there where you can learn more details about the show. You can look at the pictures of the quilts that will be auctioned. Also see some of the quilts that are on consignment there that you could purchase. And um, there's lots of signage around too. When you, if you come close to the Turrence <laughs> Cultural Arts Center, you'll find us if you follow the signs. And I just want to tell the viewers one more time: the show is this Saturday and Sunday. Entrance fee is ten dollars, but you can actually get a dollar off if you that's go right. <laughs> online. But you just offered a better deal, so yeah, you that's can't pass that, that one up. That's if you visit our meeting, not for the show. You can't yeah. come to the show for free, but if you come to a meeting, I'll be happy to um, let you be my guest for a meeting. Well, thank you so much, Donna, and congratulations on the 40th anniversary. Thank you, and thank you for allowing me to come and talk about something I love. Appreciate it. Have a great night. Thank you. Well, that does it for Newsbreak Live. And before we go, I have all the information I just mentioned once again, the South Bay Quilters Guild.org. The show is this Saturday and Sunday from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. And you can find all that other information online. Now, if you have news or video that you'd like to share, email us at newsbreak at torrentca.gov. Also, if you missed any portion of the show, you can catch it all on Torrent City Cable's YouTube page. City Council has the night off. We'll see you next time. Have a great night.